Hey cats, Ed Budd here. I'm back, and most importantly, I'm still alive. Today I've rounded up some of the top running news stories for you, presented in a nice, easy to consume package. Let's get straight to it. Welcome back to the channel, people. It's been a while. Thanks for all your messages of support recently. I am starting to feel a little bit better. Don't know what it was, stomach bug, some sort of acid reflux thing, but it certainly put me off my food. Lost a little bit of weight, but I'm starting to feel a little bit stronger now, so hopefully you get back to some running soon. But I've got some content for you today with the running news. If you've yet to do so, help the channel out by hitting that subscribe button, but also click the bell below for notifications when I roll out those new videos for you. And it really helps out too if you give this video a thumbs up, like, and share it with your running buddies. Hit us up with a super thanks as well to support the channel on a more ad hoc sort of basis. Story one. It was awesome the other day to see some more televised running on the UK TV stations. It really did raise my spirits a little bit to see the Great North Run getting some decent coverage. I think the organisers reckon there's about 60,000 people. Hopefully I can be one of those 60,000 next year. This is a race I really want to do. If you've done the Great North Run in the past or you're going to do it next year perhaps, let me know down in the comments. It generates a massive amount of money for charities which of course is always important, especially these days. I think there was a charity that they covered that collect patients who are receiving cancer treatments and transport them where they've got to go and get them back home just so it removes that worry and anxiety about getting back to where they needed to be. So some fantastic charities there that you can support. I think it was actually an on-running sponsored athlete that won the women's race. Helen Obiri took the top spot with a very strong finish. She's a very highly decorated Kenyan runner. She came in about 1 hour 07. It was the famous Ugandan road and track legend Kip Lomo. He came in first in the men's race. It was quite a counter as well, really. 59 minutes 33 seconds. Wow. Almost time trialing himself through the final section of the course. He kept checking his watch. I don't know whether he was sort of trying to run the next bit a little bit faster or trying to finish exactly on a specific time, but whatever. He just made it it looked very very easy at the end and as we know anybody that's done a half marathon or any race really it is not that easy he had no reason to worry and look behind him though the other chap that finished in second place was some way back i think solomon barrega who finished second was about a minute behind him so fantastic running there at the great north run so hope i can get there next year story two now this one really did put a smile on my face when i needed it when i wasn't feeling particularly great there's a out of this world shoe that puma have seemingly released or unveiled at first i actually didn't think this shoe was real i thought this can't be real it's just some nft thing it's a mock-up but it does appear to be an actual shoe on people's feet well i say people's feet it looks like models feet really what appears to be a supersized version of the puma fast r nitro it's like a maximized primex version of that shoe We've got that innovative plate and split heel toe design there, but in some quite bizarre environments, as you will agree with me, I think, guys. This isn't competition approved, as it says there on the midsole. Everything about this, though, is practically like the Farstar Nitro. I mean, you've got familiar outsole patterns there, and then certainly the rubber coverage is pretty much identical. This is known as the Puma Fastroid. Quite the name, and seemingly from another world as per the models here. I think this is some type of attempt at Puma echoing really the Prime X from Adidas. That shoe is probably one I'm going to use to get back out there when I begin running again in the next few days. It really is so assistive I suppose and forgiving. It's just a shoe that I know will work for me and help me to get back to where I need to be. Will this new Fastroid from Puma have similar functionality? Let's not forget we don't have the extra blades here as we have in the Prime X. More on the Puma Fastroid when I hear it. I'll keep my ear to the ground not literally story three nike have unveiled their often very anticipated echidon colorways of the vaporfly and alphafly models it's a little early this time around normally they're like towards november december but it looks like we might see a slightly earlier release for these striking almost neon green versions are on the cards for this year or should i say next year the back it in actually is. Either way, if I am to pick up a second pair of the Vaporfly Next Percent 2 for racing, it will be this one. This one really speaks to me. Sort of a, like a pistachio mint choc chip kind of version. I like it. It's been very uh, soothing on the stomach recently, that ice cream. I think it makes a nice change from the brighter oranges and purples that we've seen recently. 
Not quite so vomit-inducing, I suppose. A few red hits on the last eyelets and outsole swoosh on the next percent too. Love the fade of the green to the white of the midsole sidewall as well. The Alpha Fly 2 version has reflective elements on the medial and lateral sides of the upper, along with a strange red portion on the heel padding that's clearly there to hide where the shoe's gonna like rub the back of your heel and it might start to bleed a little bit. That's clearly why they've put that in. It's just a really weird position for that, I think. I'm not such a fan of the Alpha Fly 2 colorway here. I've got a pair of those and I've still got to take them up to 100 miles. I don't need another pair, but that Vaporfly Next Percent 2 could push me over the edge to pick one up. It really is a lovely colorway. It speaks to me in a language that I don't quite understand, but I like it. What do you think of these two? I think there's a Pegasus 39 as well coming out in these colorways. Let me know your thoughts and opinions downstairs. Story four, on to some important matters here. Adidas have got a really positive campaign that they're pushing out over the next month or so. In October, Adidas will be supporting the Breast Cancer Now and National Breast Cancer Foundation with a special new shoe collection. So 15 Earth credits of your hard-earned cash if you buy any of this special collection will go towards those charities, depending where you are in the world. There's a range of running, hiking, and biking footwear but also some various different pieces of apparel options too. Though it does appear the collection is a limited edition, so once they're there and they're gone, that's your lot. There's some trail-based Windrunner jackets and some fleece options as well, which are right on time judging by the change in weather recently in the mornings. It's getting really quite chilly out there now, and I'm gonna enjoy it with my new Asics vest that they've sent me that I can wear. It's gonna be cold, but you know, I always complain it's too hot, don't I? If you're looking to pick up some of the Adidas models, now is the time, otherwise donate if you can. This illness will touch all of us across our lives. There's no escape in that, people. I think some road options, some trail-based shoes as well. I hope some other companies will launch a similar campaign as well to help these very, very worthy causes. Okay, that's all the running news for this week for you. Peace and love to you all. Let me know if there's any interesting stories that I've missed somehow down in the comments. A movie interlude for you this time. So over the course of lying on the couch and just generally feeling pretty shocking, I watched one of my favorite movies. I must have watched it maybe 60, 70 times, something like that. That's Napoleon Dynamite. Now, the reason I love this movie is the fact that Napoleon, to me, is a bit of a hero, really. I guess he's an anti-hero to some people. He's quite aloof, difficult to get on with. He doesn't really understand the world around him, but very much me sometimes. Certainly when I was a younger man, I used to feel a little bit like that. I used to feel a bit of an outsider, I suppose. I think I still am, really. So I felt like that, and I can certainly empathise with the character here. I think Napoleon gets to where he needs to be, though, at the end, on his terms as well. He becomes who he needs to be and kind of who he is always destined to be, I suppose, at the end of the film. It really is a fantastic thing. Some of the lines are delivered with this sort of dry disengagement, I suppose, and trying to be humorous. The film just sort of offers itself up to you and you've got to take it in and decide what you make of it. Some people will just say, well, what's it all about? It doesn't really go anywhere. It doesn't do anything, but that's the whole point of it. It's about the characters, where they end up at the end of the film. Napoleon Dynamite, a legendary film made on a shoestring budget, really, and that has stood up to the test of time, a classic. Thanks for watching, people. It is always appreciated. If you're yet to do so, hit that subscribe button and click the bell below for notifications when I launch those new videos for you. Give this video a thumbs up, like, and share it with your running buddies. My name's Ed Budd, and I'll be seeing you.